Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks. Hello. Dark Emperor with the 65 months. Thank you, Dark Emperor. What the Swipe. Thank you for the 65 months. Thank you, thank you. Here he is. Here I am. What's going on? Crendor stuff. <laughs> nah. What up, Harper Hex? What up, Spoopy Molder? What up, BMC? I had parts of my toenails removed today. Oh my god. Did they do the uh the freeze where they freeze you? And then they do it? I imagine they did. It's too late, Blood Vendor. <laughs> it's too late. You live long enough to see yourself become the villain. We're doing good lore. <laughs> Tyranid Necron Orc. Freeze, injection, and then there's scalpel. Wowie. Wowie. Unfunny tool with the three months. Hey, Crunman chat. Hope you're all doing well. One, two, three. Swag. They have the three months. Hey, at least I don't have like a anime VTube avatar like running around my screen. <laughs> all right. Thanks. I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. They're called mutes. I don't, I don't know what it is. Thanks. I don't care what it's called. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know if I'm old. It just, it, like, it just distracts me. I'm like, I don't, I don't get, I don't know. <laughs> the mafia boss with the nine months. Think of the nine months. What the so many nine? It's like, Save the nine months. The Mafia boss. Um, and Mastermind with the six months. Thank you, Mastermind. One, five, six. Swing. Save the six months. Also, we never hit the 60 second relaxing sub goal. So I assumed it was a bad sub goal. So I've changed the new one to eat bread. I figured that'd be better. <laughs> that was a nine. Wait, I miscounted? What? What? What's the name? What? Like, there we go. I got you. <laughs> uh, Space Marines. Uh, Nakata with the 51. They were the 51 months. Swipe. They were the 51 months. Nakata. Chopper Dan with the 24 Thanks. months, two years. Put some credit nerds, hyper swipes, in the chat for Chopper Dan. Swipe. They have the two years. Yo, by the way, tomorrow night, me and Jesse are going to be doing another watch party. Thanks. Uh, apparently. Um, be, 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 be. Uh, frames are fine. It's you. Uh, we found a movie called Knowing, where a professor, Nicolas Cage, deciphers a mysterious code for telling future calamities. Can he somehow avert them? And all I know is I went to the reviews, and there was a one star review that said, There is literally no meaning to this movie. And I was like, Jesse, we gotta watch this movie. And he was like, Lamau, amazing. <laughs> Straight up. I was like, there it is. So I was like, let's watch it Saturday. And he was like, alright. 
So tomorrow night, yeah, we're gonna be watching that. It should be fun. Better ship thousand bits. How's it going, Big Kren? It's going. It's going. <laughs> Thank you for the thousand Thanks. bits. Hope you're doing well. NATO potato at the 25. Thank you for the 25 months. NATO potato. What? Swing. Thank you for the 25 months. And Wasoper with the nine months. Thank you, Wasoper. Swing. Thank you for the nine months. Uh, also, I went back to the old microphone. I was like, eh, it's not worth it. So we're back. We're back to the old microphone now. <laughs> it can handle my p p p when I'm in front of it. But it was worth. It was worth the science experiment of it. So that's at least good. Uh, I found the most Krendor game in the world called The Longing. The Longing? What the shit? It's got good ratings. An unusual mix of adventure and the idle game. It's utter loneliness deep below the surface. It's your test to wait for the awakening of your king. Wait, what? Yo, this is 100%. 100% a me game. <laughs> Alright, I'm adding it, adding it to the list. It would be awful to stream. Perfect. The long end. <laughs> Just what I'm looking for. I had the cart. Perfect. <laughs> this sounds fantastic. You have to wait 400 IRL days to be able to reach the end, but the more you make things comfortable for your character, time goes slightly faster. Oh, I see. Cool. Thanks. That's actually pretty neat. I already bought it. We're definitely playing it. <laughs> Necropolis with the 51 months. They were the 51 months. Necropolis. Swing. They were the 51 months the only reason i know a game is this tomato used to play at the end of his stream sometime <laughs> interesting interesting um five seconds on the level two hype train there it goes choo 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 i choo choo choose you it's gone Wahoo, wahoo. Um. <laughs> this would probably be a good time before we get to watching all the stuff to promote this month's sponsor, Mana. That's right, Mana. Mana is the debit card for gamers. They sent me this hat that I wear to look like a trucker or a Call of Duty player. Uh, <laughs> here it is, the debit card for gamers. Uh, you earn rewards for all purchases and gameplay. Join the waitlist with my link. The card is heavy. I'm gonna drop it on my hand, it hurts, cause it hurts to drop it on the other side of my hand. You can play COD while trucking. Great. Stuff, you get five times gaming entertainment subscriptions, three times gaming purchase, one times everything else. What do you do? You click the link, you'd try to join the wait list, you'd put your email, your phone, how old you are, you agree to the terms, you join the wait list. United States only. United States only. Um, what bank is it linked to? We will get to that. 
Pay with power. You got your standard free card. You get three times points from Select Gaming Entertainment, two times from gaming products in the Mana Shop, one time everything else, or the Mana Pro, which is $69.95, but getting so many bonuses, five times, three times, and one time everything else instead of the three, two, one. You get more monthly points for playing your games. You get Discord Nitro Classic. That's a $50 value. You get your Xbox Pass Ultimate. That's a three-month subscription, $45. You get your EA Play 15, including the Game Pass. You get your PlayStation Plus $25 value. You get your Fit Gamer Pro 100. You get your Surfshark 30. You get your 3D Aim Trainer Elite 48. And you get your First Blood Premium 60. That's a 522 yearly value for $69.95. You kidding me? Um, you can play, uh, all these games, except that they're also doing things like League of Legends and more to come. Uh, your questions answered. Ah, uh, Krendor, what is mana? Mana offers a deposit account and a debit card for people who enjoy playing video games who want to get rewarded for doing what they know and love. Mana is not a bank! But we have partnered with MVB Bank member FDIC to provide a deposit account and a Visa debit card. Mana offers a robust rewards program geared towards gamers who want to earn rewards for the time they spend in-game and their everyday purchase values. Their everyday purchases. Is Mana a credit card? No, Mana does not currently offer a credit card, but we do offer a debit card with a rich rewards program. The program is geared towards gamers who want to earn rewards for the time they spend in-game and for their everyday purchases. Uh, 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 how is Mana different from other debit cards and rewards programs? Well, Mana offers a unified ecosystem that allows gamers to earn points from making everyday purchases as well as playing their favorite games. We provide exclusive access to events, gaming hardware, betas, and more. In addition, Mana users will get discounts on gaming subscriptions and many other perks. Oh! Well, when's Mana going to be available to the public? The Mana app, deposit account, and debit card will be available in the summer of 2022. Wow, that's so close. Uh, uh, how much does Mana cost? I'm running out of voices. There are no costs to join the Mana waitlist and open a Mana account. You can upgrade to Mana Pro for an annual fee of $119.95, discounted at $16.99.95 during the waitlist period to access boosted rewards and other perks. What's the difference between Mana and Mana Pro? Uh, we already went over that, pretty much. Uh, who, who can apply for a Mana account? Currently, Mana is only available to U.S. individuals 18 years or older. We're working on making Mana available for a wider audience after we launch. Why should I trust Mana? Well, our team and investors have substantial experience in both gaming and financial space. Your funds will be held by MVB, bank, member, FDIC, and are insured up to $250,000. Uh, also... Oh, I guess you couldn't even see that. There you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. Um, also, they don't do any crypto stuff. I made sure of it. No NFTs. No trash NFT garbage. Uh, so yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, check out Mana again, how I end all these segments. They sent me this water bottle, and let me tell you what. Makes for great ASMR. Mana. Bloop. <laughs> Mom, me. Um. <laughs> that bottle's like rock solid. Uh, and by rock solid, I mean it's actually not. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to make those noises. Uh, it's a sturdy bottle, is what I'm saying. Bloop. All right. So. Everybody that I know, and by everybody I mean Sam and G-Mart, have been watching 40k lore. Now me, an intellectual, has already been into Warhammer for three years now, alright? I have a Warhammer YouTube channel, it's almost got 10,000 subscribers. I have Games Workshop connections where I get sent stuff, okay? I have actual Warhammer armies. I have an entire Necron army. I have an entire Orc army. I have entire Warhammer Sigmar fantasy armies. All right. I have an entire pile of shame of Necron stuff I have not built yet. Not Necron. Uh, Tyranid. <laughs> entire pile of Tyranid stuff I have not built yet. 
So clearly, I should be the 40k lore guy here. Alright? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna learn about the cool factions, the ones that I have. And play. Because they're really just the, the best ones. So, here we go. This is the Tyranids, Devourers of Worlds. This is uh, Luton09, who makes a ton of Warhammer 40k stuff. L-U-E-T-I-N-09. Uh, pretty much if you search any 40k lore, you're going to find Luton. <laughs> um, I have space marines that they sent me that I did not build. <laughs> so, no. I, I don't have space marines. So, well, I technically do, but they're not built. They're human. They're humans, and they're trash. Xenos armies. All right. So let's learn about Tyranids. The Tyranids. Well, maybe I shrink that a there bit. There are many horrors facing humanity in the 41st millennium. Few that rival the physically nightmarish alien race known as the Tyranids. Oh, yeah. Also known as the Great Devourer. Oh, yeah. There they are. Good stuff. Good stuff. Tyranids are a Xenos race best described as a bioformic ecosystem. All have genetically similar elements but regularly diverge and evolve. Unlike most races in the galaxy, the Tyranids have no social or ideological goal. Their goal is survival. Yeah, survive. They form fleets of these bioforms known as hive fleets or biomechanical structures known as hive ships. They move through systems stripping planets of biomatter like locusts. Then using this collected matter, they fuel their further evolution and expansion. Hell this yeah. Dude, how much, how much cooler is that than like, oh, I'm just a space marine. <laughs> uh, space marine. Tyranids share a powerful ability <laughs> in that form of the hive mind. This enables them to share information, react and make large Ooh, the hive mind, yes. near instantaneously from the masses of forms that make up their collective. They also Yo, have by the way, before we keep going, uh, if you know StarCraft, Zerg are actually based off the Tyranids. Fun fact. You might have guessed it just from, you know, playing StarCraft. <laughs> but Zerg are indeed uh, based off Tyranids. And not the other way around. I'm sure some people are like, Tyranids, that's like Zerg. But no, it's it's not. In fact, StarCraft, the actual game, was supposed to be a 40k game. With Space Marines, Zerg, and the... Uh, what are they? Eldari? Is that the Eldari? I don't know. Whatever the space elves are. Psychic bond known as <laughs> Eldar? The is it Eldar? Listen yeah, that's it. Not Eldari. Coordinate with other Tyranids around them as if one greater organism. The behavior likened more to the conscious and unconscious muscle contractions of a larger entity than actual individual behavior. The reactive movement of flocks of birds causing a natural spatial shifting is not entirely unlike the way in which the Tyranid synapse behaves. Yo, that's crazy. This collective reactionary cooperation is especially important when you consider that Tyranid's approach to warfare is simply often to overwhelm through weight of numbers. A tidal wave of seething. Oh, there's the copyrightable name. Biomass. I see. <laughs> it's like Seraphon. With numbers beyond estimation forming the Tyranid fleets, the hive mind is critically important, as the organisms sentient or otherwise who compromise the Tyranids would just return to a state of rapid disorder. It's easier to list the armies I don't have. Without some intrinsic That's me and Age of Sigmar. to keep them focused and organized. Unlike many species in the 41st millennium, the Tyranids are far from xenophobic. In fact, they actively seek genetic transfer of material across species. They will absorb and utilize any useful genetic traits they discover in life forms or on worlds that they consume. Oh, Warcraft was too? I didn't even realize used that. To improve their effectiveness either in biomatic consumption and efficiency or combat. All Tyranids are produced from a single life form within the Hive fleets 
known as the Norn Queen. Without Norn this bioform, they would be unable to continue to replenish their forces. And much like any life form that lives in a colony, oh the queen is to be found at the center, where she is most difficult to reach and most well defended. She essentially not only reproduces, but bioengineers the life oh forms my God. in the Tyranid swarm. <laughs> the queens will also relay information to one another no, those Tyranid warriors? through the hive mind and enable them to create better suited or more powerful life forms. They also transmit orders and information to the lesser entities. In order to continue reproduction of the Tyranid bioforms, the Norn Queens require a constant supply of biomass. And this is literally pumped from a planet that has oh been harvested God. by a Tyranid swarm back to their hive ships in orbit. It's just Disgusting a swamp. Reclamation pools are formed on the planet's surface where all biomass is dissolved. Oh my God, it's like Gary, Gary Indiana. The queen Jesus. will then continually produce new Tyranid <laughs> forms in a variety of I didn't of realize that's where the Tyranids came from. Birth, larvae, or grown that's in crazy. sacs. Most forms produced, though, do require further nurture from a worker class who, as with most colony life forms, provide them with the nutrition and care needed until they can survive for themselves. In the case of Tyranids, well, this usually Tyranids. happens very quickly. The most significant encounters with the Tyranids have occurred relatively recently, and in the scheme of things they are a fairly new threat, having first been truly encountered around 745 in Millennium 41. But rumors and fragments of information can potentially trace their Indiana's impact the to Midwest. anything in the region of the 35th the Mid-East or before. They're believed to have been attracted to the galaxy due to the Emperor's psychic beacon. Listen, I went to Indiana. They have a sign that says hell is real. That is Midwest. Warp. <laughs> Imperial navigators <laughs> use it to calculate their courses through dangerous warp space. The first major incursion by the Tyranids was Hive Fleet Behemoth, which after causing catastrophic damage on countless worlds, was ultimately repelled by the Ultramarines chapter. But this battle was Ooh, barely... Ooh, Marines, get them out of here, so disgusting. ...they would take hundreds of years to replenish and recover from. These events gave a worrying glimpse Ooh. to the Imperium of the power wielded and damage that could be inflicted from a Tyranid Hive Fleet. It's feared and suspected that much worse is even to come, and the Tyranids have really only begun to scout through the galaxy. Oh yeah, there's a hell Michigan. The Tyranid Hive Fleets and their subsequent tendrils move quickly through systems, consuming all biomatter, but they never enter the warp, nor do they possess actual faster-than-light technology in the standard sense. They instead use psychic powers of a specialized hive ship known as a Narval. The manipulate narwhal. gravity fields of any star system they are in to achieve faster than light travel. The narwhal ships are more scouting than combat focused, and they use clusters of monofilaments to assess electromagnetic and gravity. I feel like I'm in, a, I'm in a this enables them to detect science the class. direction and location <laughs> of new systems containing potential biomatter for the fleet. Battle for Mac Rage is the starter set. Use this are not Battle clear, but in essence, rage. what may happen here is the novel somehow create a huge gravity well, enabling the fleet oh to then move at speeds equivalent to fast and light. How old is that? Used by the Imperium. This huge distortion of gravity has a devastating impact, though, on inhabited planets in the system, with the gravity well causing cores of planets to swell, creating subsequent earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, 2004? and any number of oh my God. consequences. The Tyranid fleet then essentially fall through this compression, allowing them to reach their destinations at immense speed. The physics of this are all pretty spurious, but not much more than 40k law. I guarantee it's just people reading One Wikipedia 100%. Is that on oh, it's McCraig. Traveling through the gravity well, they are then only capable of sub light speeds. And so this can mean that they will still take many years or even decades to actually reach their final destination. If they're able to be detected in time, this window may give whatever worlds they're headed for time to prepare, evacuate, or call for defensive reinforcements. The all-encompassing effect of the psychic hive mind of the Tyranids forms a phenomenon known as the shadow in the warp. This smothers and Oh yeah, they do have a lot of uh, psychic systems. stuff. Whenever a Tyranid fleet is near, this effect will become apparent as psychers will struggle Grizzly's to lost. their abilities. Uh, navigation and communication become stupid warriors. impossible. For the Imperium, this apparently ambient effect of the Tyranid race is especially devastating as they rely on psychic communications heavily. If a planet becomes enveloped by this effect, they will unlikely be able to call for help and are then left with the sobering prospect of facing the inevitable Tyranid swarm. Oh. 
Interesting. So the psychic powers the like interrupt their communication. As separate forces competing with one another for resources, much like any other organism of the same species will compete with their own for resources. However, in reality, this is not the case. The Tyranids, through their hive mind, form a much more complex construction of organisms. Perhaps the most terrifying fact about the Tyranids, though, is their oh god frame drops uh frame Much drops like okay we're good predators looking into those black black eyes you know that they have no feelings about their actions only that they know what they must do and their instincts and synapse led instructions from the hive mind tell them all they need to know the strength of the hive mind and its localized area of effect will actually wax and wane but it's strongest around some of the more significant bioforms like tyranid warriors hive tyrants which will cause this amplification effect of the hive mind. Without these synaptic linchpins, many of the lesser tyranid forms would actually revert to unfocused animalistic behaviors. But for that reason, there is no one commander within a tyranid space form. Space got the space often, phone lines, uh -oh. <laughs> senior forms that secure the network of the hive mind uniting and focusing the lesser forms. This synapse link bonds tyranids together like an invisible rubber banding effect. The larger warriors and tyrants are capable of some level of decision. I actually making, learned about the uh, relative to their role within the hive mind. And the way the hive mind works when you play the game. Preemptively instinctual than actually tactical. It's like you have to have units within like a certain range of each other. Which can again give the impression. This guy's copying me, copying Sam. All right, the, 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 kind of get him out of here. Instinct. The whole thing is <laughs> get him out of here. Chorus of chaotic input that runs through specialized synapse entities who act. Get him out of here. Also, I'll lay with the 73 months, save the 73 months. What the person? I don't know what the person of two back to a putty person, that 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 putty person. Swing! Save the 73 months, I'll lay. Why are my frames dropping? Oh my god. It is hubs to convey and facilitate the distribution and collection of this mass synaptic data. These creatures, though, Hold are on, Steam's probably downloading something. Organisms and any psychic entity of power usually will attract attention from the dark close beings it? who reside within the warp. And this has been established for a long time. But why is it then that the Tyranid psychers seem not to attract the nightmarish beings from within the warp when the opposite is true for almost all other races? It simply is a mystery. Bioengineering. Tyranids use a unique method of construction to create their ships, weapons, and general mechanical requirements. This means that they do not need to be concerned with locating metals or fabrication of plastic. Frames! Instead, as with everything, they utilize <laughs> biomass from the worlds that they ravage. What the this shit? This biomass is then genetically engineered to grow the structure. Nox gifted a sub to Toaster Woman. Thank you, acquire. Nox. This means that everything they use or inhabit is in Thank essence very much. a part of the Tyranid Collective, down to the smallest glands or connective tissues right through to gargantuan bioengineered starships. The very worst of their creations are, of course, the combat-focused entities. To a human, they embody everything that is Xenos. They are uh, literal this sucks. nightmares Soup and space made Marines. real. While they do possess ranged weapons, many Tyranid creatures are fighters and melee-focused. A great deal of Tyranid weaponry are these creatures' own teeth and claws, but simply bioengineered to appalling degrees of effectiveness. These claws will slice clean through all but the toughest armor and eviscerate their enemies in seconds. They also carry ranged bio cannons. Uh, next slide. Uh, we don't get the next slide yet. That will you have to wait. The flesh of their enemy you have to wait in class, dude. I remember I used to have a uh, they usually a also teacher in school, of and she would show us slideshows well, of like her trip to Switzerland. Anything, including the armor of a She'd be like, "Here is the picture so of the Swiss Alps. Here's the picture of a Tyranid eating a human. Here's the picture of a psychic uh, bug using his magical magical powers to destroy uh, or buff various other things." Also, expel and impale their targets, pinning them in place, or just dismembering. 
ordering them where they stand. Most <laughs> trained weapons conform to this formula of sharp implements. I remember she was like, spray. the presidential election like is the my Super Bowl. When the Super Bowl was happening and everyone's like, oh, the Super Bowl's coming up. She was like, the presidential election's my Super Bowl. Whereupon it would obviously be is anyone else dropping pieces. frames? Yes. Some timid creatures like the and I don't know why. Live creatures from there it's a classic. Weapons. It's probably because it's Friday night. Comcast Friday night. The name implies, it Everybody's on the internet. They're having fun. Through armor and into the pipes are clogged. And beyond. Other weapons like the shock cannon fire sinews much like a taser. All right, here we go. Pause. We're going to pause the video. Take a look at these weapons. All right. That way we can see we can we don't need frames for that. We have a rending claw. We have a wrecking ball. Uh, we got a an impaler cannon. We got a devourer. We got a, a barbed strangler. We got a flesh borer. Look at and that. Dude, the these frames. Are you kidding? Pulse energy. Another interesting weapon in the Tyranid arsenal are the barbed strangler seed pods. These are fired out and then upon impact grow to maturity in seconds with barbed tendrils. Oh my god, we got a spot host raid. Thank you, spot. For the host raid. Thank you, spot. Welcome, welcome, spudsters. You ever get that one, the spudsters? The old spudsters, Nick's third nipple, four years, Tyranids, Commander deck, put some corner nerds, hypers, wives, mummies, pop up, in the chat. Swing. Save the 48 months. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, Magic's coming out with a Warhammer Commander deck as well. That's right. I love me some, uh, Warhammer Magic uh, cross promotion working together. I don't know what it's called. Collaboration. That's the one I'm working for. Uh, by the way, Sputsters, uh, we're, we're dropping heavy frames right here. It's, uh, it's not good. I've dropped 11,000 frames. <laughs> so, uh, it's not, it's not great. Tyranids even have bio mines known as spore mines, and these are automatically triggered but when we a got spore mines comes into close proximity. These mines are not embedded in the ground, but rather float around after being deployed until they come uh, near the slide show. As with most mines, mechanical <laughs> or otherwise, the detonation releases in spore mines a nasty cocktail of acid, toxic gas, and chitin shrapnel with relative consequences to target. Now, Tyranids obviously do not wear armor in the normal Frames. sense, as with everything, they have bioengineered reinforced carapaces or body shells. Larger organisms will also likely have strengthened Frames. exoskeletons. These it's not even, uh, okay, like, earth. here's the thing, like, I don't mind dropping frames when it's like, oh, there's like a blizzard outside, or like, oh man, it's like 800 degrees outside, or something like that, or like, oh, the, you know, whatever. But when it's just like... It's like 70 degrees outside, perfect weather. It's a Friday night at like midnight. Like, why, why are we dropping frames? Why are we dropping frames? Flippy Killer, 27 months, 27 months. Holy shit, my man Crendor is pretty poggers. <laughs> Thank you, Flippy Killer. It's like, David, 27 months. Like, what is this garbage, trash upload speed? It could be way worse. We're learning lore instead of lagging in a game. That's true. From bio this is practically a slideshow anyway. These like, we don't need the audio. Or, I mean, we don't need the, the visuals. We just need the audio, right? Weaponry is gonna be able to begin That's all we to need. Scratch the surface. And then I can Smaller just, like, you know, kind of... This kinda, is more akin uh, to a tough uh, uh, hide uh, uh, than a bone-like uh, uh, carapace. Uh, uh, this is the standard for the smaller, more disposable uh, uh, organisms uh, uh, in a Tyranid uh, uh, swarm uh, uh, and will only really prevent uh, uh, melee attacks and small uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, fire. Anything more and its defensive abilities are actually limited. 
logical. It is hard dropping now. What the? Covering, they're mad. They're mad that I called out their throttling. All of the creature and is much more effective at protecting the tyrannid organism that use this form of protection. Oh. On top of these natural defenses and bio weapons, okay, tyrannids back. also have plenty of attributes, offensive and defensive, that they wield as part of their. Best on the 40k bodies. game link. Acid oh. Pretty common among tyrannids with acidic jaws. I think I do actually. Hold on. That consumes and dissolves enemies in seconds. <laughs> Chameleonic skin also allows some tyrannids to stealthily blend into surroundings to launch ambush attacks on passing Hold enemy. On. Enhanced neural senses enable tyrannids Hold to on. detect hidden enemy Hold using tech to cover their appearance or location, and powerful leaping appendages what? allow them to fly into battle, you, crushing enemies in the process. Many have increased regenerative abilities that enable the fast you. healing of even Hold catastrophically on, severe <laughs> wounds. Some tyrannids simply just possess very spiky and thorny carapaces, so when they charge into battle, there you go, I got you, I got you. That's the one. Lacerated or impaled by the creature's own surrounding body armor. A thorax swarm TB did a 40k lore video? I didn't even realize that. Weapons some tyranids feature. In their swollen chest cavities, many creatures are amassed. Pack Mule with the four years. Yo, what up, Pack Mule? Creatures. And when in proximity How you doing? Of the enemy, Four years. this thorax sac will just erupt in a huge burst, throwing the parasites hurtling towards and drowning the unwitting victims in thousands of these small, the very aggressive tyranid forms. These will then proceed to Mama crawl mia. inside armor, down enemy sure, throats, it. and chew through eyes and exterior We're dropping flesh. frames anyway, dude. It is, it is frame drop city up in here. Their victims, or suck all the moisture out of their body, desiccating them in seconds. Did he or say just suckle? climb in and around the bodies of the enemy, exploding with needles of chitin, literally bleeding them to death. In general, tyranid forms are sharp, acidic, and hazardous in general to your health. But it's not just the small life forms. The living ships themselves also have offensive and Oh yeah, this is a this is a power point power <laughs> power point weapons that will burn This is a power point of my trip to the burrow its way the Bermuda Islands. Uh, it's truly beautiful. From these. And uh, this is a power point formed from of the reconstituted <laughs> biomatter of their unwilling. Uh, you know, Spliced just my mental state image. Part of the horror is not simply this is a PowerPoint of <laughs> no, but that all of this uh, my internet currently become tyrannid in a these are my internet uh, wires and evolution. Uh, this is matter <laughs> is as previously mentioned to hold on. All right, let's see. Hold on, let me anyway. Warhammer 40k lore in a minute. All right, here we go. Let's learn about this 40k lore in a minute. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. No, I'm dropping frames. I've dropped 23,000 frames right now. My internet is shitting itself. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Our story begins with a godlike being of immense power known only as the Emperor uniting the warring factions of Earth and embarking on the Great Crusade to reunite all of mankind's lost colonies. He did this by creating Stop dropping of the frames, dude! Stop engineered badasses known as Space Marines, each with an even more ridiculously OP Primarch to lead them. Unfortunately, the four gods of chaos who weren't really into that sort of thing intervened and scattered the Primarchs across the universe while still in their infancy. Rather annoyed by this, the Emperor led the legions across the galaxy, reclaiming, subjugating, or annihilating every world they could find, gradually picking up the lost Primarchs <laughs> along the way. Eventually, the Emperor decided there were more important things to do and retired from his career of galaxy plundering to go and muck about with ancient science back on Earth, leaving his favorite Primarch Horus in command of the Crusade. All was going well until the Chaos Tainted Chaplain Erebus engineered a plot in which Horus would also fall to Chaos. Already suffering from some pretty serious daddy issues, Horus gathered half the Space Marine Legion's suicide and set about waging civil war against the Emperor. This conflict would be known as the Horus Heresy and culminated in a massive invasion of Earth. The Emperor, knowing his forces were outnumbered and on the verge of losing the battle, teleported to Horus's flagship to engage him in mortal combat. But being a sentimental old son, could not bring himself to kill his favorite son. Horus, having no such qualms, beat the snot out of him. Finally seeing sense, the Emperor killed him with mind bullets and the Loyalists were victorious. Near death, the Emperor was placed in a huge machine known as the Golden Throne, which maintained its psychic essence at the bargain price of the souls of a thousand unlucky sods every single day. The Imperium fell into a state of technological regression and brutal dictatorship, and for 10,000 years has been under siege from all sides by every single nasty the universe can throw at it. Basically, life sucks. There's only war, and you're probably going to get eaten by Tyranids. Have fun. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I mean, that checks out. That's probably all the lore you really need, to be honest. <laughs> um... Man, it is. 
It's frame drop city, dude. It is. Hold on, we go back. Part of the horror is not simply that they will destroy you and everything you know, but that all of this <laughs> and yourself will become tyrannied in a horrific parody. Here we go. We're back to the slideshow. Back to the old slideshow here. Actually, we're not dropping frames right now. The Timonid's main means of acquiring new biomes... Uh, I haven't seen the 30k trailer. I did see the new... The dwarves, or the squats, is that what they're calling them? The land of all its life forms I've read like 25 Horus Heresy novels, love 40k. Really? Shit, dude. Process. I play a lot of, uh, Warhammer in general. Like, I have a, an entire Orc army, I have an entire Necron army, I have Tyranids I haven't built. I have a bunch of Sigmar armies. So I actually do the painting and the playing and the building. These well, creatures focus mainly on building, painting, playing. Stealth, but are undoubtedly still horrific and dangerous in their viciousness. They'll also unusually focus on staying alive, as opposed to in later full-blown assaults, which are much more like a tidal wave of tyranid form. In fact, last night was my stream of me just the uh, painting. Um, Nurgle. Are also <laughs> I just painted Nurgle for like an hour. Main assault tyrannid life forms because of their independence. They exhibit. You got a kid now? Oh my God! Congratulations. How much sleep do you get? <laughs> this is no doubt being decided as the most effective course of action and behavior for these early scouting tyrannids. The Vanguard drone ships are simply the transportation for these early scouts. They are small, independent ships and only will periodically return back to the main Hive Fleet vessels. Lictors are the masters of stealth. Using feed and tendrils, they analyze <laughs> all the environmental elements and constituent biomatter that is available to them. They may also choose to kill and devour life forms to absorb their memories, as is one of the Tyranid traits. These memories may give them further relevant information or acquire locations to explore. Gene stealers, though, will not simply acquire biomatter intel, they will also begin the infection of the Tyranid forms in the local ecosystem. This corruption. Okay, pause. So, like, here's something I realized. This is somebody who, like, I don't know anything about the lore. All I cared about was, like, building and painting and then playing the actual game. So, like, when I saw Tyranids in the, you know, the games workshops, right? Uh, I was like gene stealers, but like gene stealers had stuff that were in Tyranids, but they were also like their own thing. So I'm like, what's the difference between like gene stealers in Tyranids versus gene stealers in like their own thing? You know what I'm saying? Why is that? <laughs> Yo, don't, okay, knock on wood, but we haven't dropped any frames recently. Hello, Tina. Gene Stealer Cult is human and Gene Stealer hybrids. Oh, it's a sub faction. Okay, I see. That checks out. Gene Stealer human who've been infected by Gene Stealers a bit. Okay. So they're like mutants. All right. That, I got it. I got it. Nice. All right. Eventually result in the first Tyranid hybrid creatures from the planet's native species being formed. Once these initial recon periods are complete, the Tyranids will quickly switch their behavior from somewhat passive investigation to full-on planetary infestation and excessive aggression. A psychic call emitted to the swarm will alter the fleet and subsequently pull the hive ship toward the planet. Any humanoids on said planet at this time would be advised to... Ew, panic. humans. Disgusting. Because infestation will now begin. As the high fleet draws near, it will, as previously stated, disrupt much if not all communication from the target planet and its inhabitants, and they will now Kinda be like cut Skaven, off... like stay in the shadows, expand their cult, until it's time to pop and destroy it. Oh, okay, I see. ...help or give warnings to others. Any evacuations that can be made would probably be advised to do so, but even they may not escape with the high fleet monitoring movement in and around their target planet. Even if ships Man, were I'm so sent pumped to for the new Skaven book. The planet, they may not be able to actually exit into warp space because of the Tyranid's psychic effect, the shadow in the warp. And once arriving at the planet, mycetic spores are released into the atmosphere, raining down. And these spores the feed shit? the planet with microorganisms, which will alter and distort the planet's natural organic life forms. They'll also begin to break down complex organic molecules and alter them to be more suitable for absorption by the swarm. 
This first as one of many unpleasant processes can affect oh, complex spores and just shooting out. I love it. Meanwhile, other spores will actually contain the more complex <laughs> tyranid life forms, and these will begin to group together, preparing to assault when commanded to do so. Others, though, will burrow underground, planting more spores that will then grow into capillary towers. These vast chitin towers raise up out of the ground and reach as high as the upper atmosphere. Reclamation pools will then appear near to them, linked via underground root systems. These towers will then later connect via the tubes from the hive ships to suck up biomatter from the planet. Capillary towers can grow almost anywhere environmental conditions seem to not affect them. The reclamation pools are the unpleasant pools where all the planet's biomatter is gathered and broken down collectively. It's essentially a thick soup of dissolving life forms, both sentient and non, which the hive ships will then suck dry. But Tyranids will not just reap the organic surface of a planet, but also its underground mineral wealth. So this initial infestation phase will mean creatures underground. I wish they did a uh, a total war 40k warhammer. That'd be pretty neat. Dissolved and consumed by the swarm. As this is all happening, the concealed infiltrators. I don't know why they haven't yet. Gene stealers will now emerge, bursting from their hidden positions around the planet to attack anything that they have deemed to be a vital defensive system from their intelligence collection efforts. They may target senior leaders, officers, critical infrastructure. Oh, there's rumors they might. Interesting. Prime targets. And these attacks will also start to cause fear, panic, confusion from further hindering a planet's attempt to keep control of any kind of public order. Once the Tyranids have begun this initial phase, it will not be long before the more severe and far I hope it's better than Total War 3. I mean, I, th I thought Total War 3 is pretty good. I think it just needs more stuff. They need to bring in the old stuff, honestly. Like, the, they need to bring in the Total War 2 stuff into Total War 3. Tyranid forms will thunder across the planet, slaughtering anything native that stands in their way. All the small forms like the gene stealers and those seeded like gaunts, gargoyles, etc. are going to be present, but now also will come the bigger forms, carnifexes and hierophants, the true nightmare creatures. The capillary towers will also start to burst from the planet's surface as well, reaching up into the skies and vast swathes of tyranids scouring the planet. The towers will start to begin the process of consuming biomatter because there is no standing on ceremony for victory. From the initial assault to the final exodus, the process of absorption and consuming biomatter will begin. The capillary towers themselves are far from inert systems. They'll actually throw out tendrils and tubules that can absorb life forms and native species. For more civilian planets, the Tyranids will usually just allow the gene stealers and gaunt genus to do most of the work. Termagants, though, will also make up this battle force, as will the Tyranid warriors, keeping the swarms coordinated and focused, relaying the hive mind among them. More heavily defended planets, however, are going to require more significant firepower, and the Tyranids unfortunately have this at their disposal in the form of Hierophants. These bio-titans are terrifying enemies, towering over the battlefield. They are some of the largest forms in the Tyranid arsenal, comparable in size to Imperial Titans. Oh, uh, yeah. And with some of the largest biocannons in the Tyranid Gee, weapon, what are those? A large electro Are those Forge World models? corrosive maggots that upon impact of any structure or enemy... Or are they like actual the Tyranid things? ...corroding acid will burn, burrow, and dissolve whatever they come into contact with, inevitably reducing it to a pool of dissolving, screaming, collapsed biomatter. It also is supported by heavy armored chitin. Oh, they are. Any oh, just the one on the left, okay. Claws. Their own hide also exudes spores of poison, and its belly scattered with spined tendrils, lashing out and impaling any enemy who attempts to get close to it. It can, as with most Tyranids, also rapidly evolve, even on the battlefield, to adapt to whatever it might be faced with. These assaulting forces are mainly suppressive in their objective. They're not there to collect or break down biomaterial for the hive, they are there to crush resistance to the swarm. All materials will be later collected with ease. One of the most efficient elements of the Tyranid assault Man, they is look simply by the nothing Titan is makes 20 videos about assembly painting. I mean, listen, I've already built a stomper. Deaths will simply just be reabsorbed into the bio That thing's pretty big. That's probably the biggest thing I got. Reconstituted. This high level of efficiency and minimal waste explains why the Tyranids are more than happy to win battles through sheer weight of numbers with apparently little to any downside. 
a worrying prospect to any force attempting to repel an enemy with no real appreciation for the horrors they're inflicting and certainly no moral compass of any kind. But then what? Four hundred eighty-four dollars. Oh my God! The first millennium. They are unrelenting and nearly unstoppable. Jesus. An irresistible Jesus. force of violent evolution. And it's just a giant ass block orcs, of fine cast resin or whatever. This level of infestation is in a critical state. Even if arriving defenders were able to somehow destroy the Hive Fleet's main ship, the existing Tyranids on the planet's surface will cause ongoing devastation for potentially millennia to come. Tyranid planetary infections occur at a microbial level, so truly eradicating them can be nearly impossible, short of full-scale exterminatus. Oh, there's a biotitan and a Depticon? I didn't see that. To save a colony or planet in the first place, but as the Imperium, I went to a Depticon, I just saw the, like, super painted the stuff. Table. And then walked around a bit. <laughs> With much of the planet overrun with Tyranids and any defenders likely beginning to buckle, if not already collapsing under the weight of nightmarish violence and body-ruining acidic bioweaponry, the collection process for the planet's biomatter will now be well underway. And the world oh, it's better than fine chaos. Well, that's good. Spiral <laughs> that it will struggle to, if not already. I'm used to fine chaos because I play all the old ass still, armies. Battle is proving especially like Skaven and Lizard Men and will then start to utilize Beast of Chaos. On the surface, <laughs> to form new creatures and effectively use the planet against itself. Rippers will begin a swathe of foul consummation, sweeping across the surface and consuming and devouring all matter in their sight. Once these rippers have had their fill, they will proceed to the biopools around capillary towers. Yet instead of bringing up their consumed mass into the pool or depositing it by some other means of excretion, the rippers will shockingly throw themselves into the biopools to simply be dissolved and then consumed back into the biomass of the hive fleet. This disturbing act demonstrates how the Tyranids hold little to any regard for their own individual entities and view their form as a singular collective, a whole organism one and the same. New rippers will be continually All titan game at the, the open tables. Is exhausted. Ocean sea life That's kind of like my orc army. My orc form, army is literally a titan. Will all be uh, who stands stage, next to a, far an orc any hope of uh, or mega knob, the one that gives the shield so that the titan has a six up ward. The had the option and then just a bunch of squig riders. <laughs> on the planet, but and just, just like the rest of the army is just squig riders. And a couple uh, no a couple helicopter dudes. Scraps of remaining humanoids hidden somewhere underground in deep bunkers. If no action is taken, they may survive by chance, but more likely will be dug down to and extracted by the nightmarish alien force. Still, not all hope is lost in the grand scheme of things. A defensive move is possible at this point and would actually be somewhat useful. It would be entirely possible that the Tyranids at this juncture may be at a point where they have to expend more biomatter than they are yet to have been able to consume meaning they're actually at a net loss in terms of their overall collection of biomatter. So to launch an attack at this point would actually be tactically sound from a generally defensive point of view for other worlds Damn, that's a the big system. ass Tyranid. may even mean that the Tyranid threat can either be repelled Dude, speaking of warp resin, like my warp the, the fine cast, always to my Croxagors, when I built Croxagors a few years ago, to profit their, from their encounter, axes are literally all like they <laughs> with not so they look like cartoon them. characters they they're no like such a thing, but it would <laughs> i was like god can they just like make good crocs agors please and possibly even they don't look like they're more from the 1995 the warhammer cartoon may well be completely lost for the Imperium or whoever is fighting I did do hot water. Fleet, I mean, I hit the point where I don't care how they look. I think they look funnier, goofier, to, to be honest. Whatever I just want, like, actual new good sense. Croxagor this models. This is true of the wars and conflicts in the 41st millennium. They're often part of a larger picture, and so these efforts are not as pointless as they might appear to be. They could mean that future Tyranid assaults are successfully repelled before reaching a point of no return. Meanwhile, though, Tyranid forms would be far from concerned with such grandiose concepts and instead be wholly focused on their task of extracting biomatter, an orgy of consummation continuing across the entire planet. After the capillary towers are spread across the surface, the problem is like all the shit I like from ground, that, like, life forms and resources my, uh, my slan is fine cast. 
The like sun blood is fine, guys. Uh, salamanders the hive are fine, guys. Croxigore is fine, guys. From the hive ship to connect with the capillary towers, which are now uh, a bunch of Skaven are fine, guys. The biomatter from the pools around the capillary towers. A bunch of beast of chaos shit are fine, guys. They're like annoying fine, guys. To the story, once all the planets defeated, forces are completely destroyed. Even the surviving Tyranid forces will begin to throw themselves suicidally into the digestive biopools surrounding the capillary towers. They are immediately broken down by the highly acidic liquids and devoured by the hive ship. This guy loves saying orgy. Wait, did he? S did the guy in the video say orgy? I didn't even realize. I've like. Okay, here's the problem with like listening to these. I like get so. The towers I like can't pay attention. <laughs> the water itself I like planet. get so then distracted the too easily. Cells will begin to break down and be reabsorbed by the hive ship. Lastly, and perhaps most shockingly of all, even the planet's atmosphere is consumed by the hive ship. It just reminds Before me of being in school. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I actually care about this stuff. Like I still think it's cool, but like I just get distracted, and I just like I lose focus. Some Imperium biologists speculate the hive ships using unseen processes transform the planet's atmosphere into a solid matter state. As the Tyranid fleet slowly begin to move away from the planet with their sub light speed limitations, I don't have ADHD. Left behind is a barren like, I can pay attention to like plenty of things. It's just and destroyed world that will likely never see life. I think, okay, I think again, I know what it is. It's when it's like installations as all this type of thing. Extracted. Or it's like, fleet plan then it's just pictures, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if somebody was talking, like if it showed like an actual person talking, I could pay attention more. Gathered from the last devouring. This may lead to the development of new bioforms or the improvement of existing ones, making the Tyranid either more combat effective or improving their harvesting efficiency. Because of the Tyranid's psychic force that often prevents ships from exiting the warp in a system under assault by a high fleet, as like I don't really like audiobooks for that reason either. Like I struggle with audiobooks. Destroyed. I'd rather just read a book. Like if I read a book, I'm like, oh okay. But like if I listen to an audiobook, I'm like. But with no way of knowing their destination, <laughs> Imperial forces will need to move swiftly if they're able to have any hope at all of repelling wherever the Tyranid threat next decide they wish to devour. Um, interesting. Let's see. Uh, what if we go 40k lore orcs? All right, give me some orc lore here. Uh, orcs war is life. Do you listen to anything while painting? Uh, honestly, not really. Sometimes I'll I'll usually watch stuff. If anything, I'll kind of just like glance up and then go back to painting, or I just kind of don't listen to anything to be honest. Uh, so like anybody that just doesn't have pictures of stuff and they're like an actual person talking. I guess there's this guy. Warmer 40k. That's timeline. Orcs explained by an Australian. Happy October. Okay, no. <laughs> Darius. You try this one. What's this one? Hold on. Hey all, this is part. Every single Warhammer 40k faction explained part two. Oh yeah, this, I've seen this dude. Hold on. Hey, all this is part two. Let me skip to the good uh, factions here. Here we go. The bugs. <laughs> the tyranids. <laughs> now, you want to talk something a lot more fun, a little more simple than all this crazy Eldar shenanigans? Let's talk the tyranids. They're bugs. We did like do the Zerg, TB lore in a video Zerg, in a minute, yes. The wilds like Zerg because they were actually supposed to uh, be what Zerg were. Uh, apparently StarCraft was supposed to be a 40k game in the beginning. Hence why they look so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, kind of space marine -y. Those marines, huh? They look a little bit space marine -y to me. Maybe. I don't know. 
You really fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't ya? Tyranids are a giant infestation of unfathomable proportions. Yeah, this is like the only person that does face thing. Oh my god, that one dude. By the way, let me... <laughs> There's like one guy, I think it's name, his name is Auspex Tactics. And he's like probably the best person to go to for like strategy and 40k and like learning new stuff. But I swear to God, it sounds like he's in his basement or like not base. It's like he's in his room trying to not wake his parents up. Like every video, he's just like, everybody, yeah, he's just me talking about Tyranids and the way they play. This is the way they're going to be doing it. it is, 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 is. Here's the Tyranid, you know, four plus save and a four plus ward. The four plus ward is looking good, but I do think that it's not this. And I'm just like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, you just, is he just like sitting in his room, like not trying to wake someone up? That's literally the vibe I get. Like, he's just not trying to wake somebody up who's sleeping next to him. I just, <laughs> it like, it bothers me. So usually I'm like, all right, what's he got up here? And I'll like, I'll like skim through the video. Like, okay, tier one units. Okay, that looks good. Like, I can listen to him for a bit, but I'm just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it, just, it bothers me and I don't know why. These are giant, extremely <laughs> bio-advanced hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate to be extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path. They are probably the least evil faction in all of 40k because all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire galaxy. They hangry and we food. Also, this Tyranid hive mind has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. And an entire giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of orbit and just will massacre, absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come in so many varieties too, all in based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the hormigons, termagons, and gene stealers, all the way to the hive guard and the exocrines and the swarm lord to hive tyrants and their giant battle fleets. Oh yeah, and hive tyrants. As crazy as the hierophant bio titan. The Tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, uh, carapaces and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms and are pretty spooky when it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you want the most- Are Hive Tyrants the ones that, uh, they're the shooting ones where they would shoot and then they're just really broken and then they redid the book and now they're still like strong. Are those the ones? Or what am I thinking of? I'm pretty sure those are Hive Tyrants, right? Those are, uh... There's something like, but now you have to be in, within range of the, you know, the, the old Wi-Fi or whatever it is, right? They can have wings also. Wait, what am I, th I'm, uh... I'm thinking of something, hold on, I gotta look this up. I look this up. Gotta look this up. Uh, 40k Terzino Stirnid. I'm thinking of Hive Guard. Okay, I'm thinking of Hive Guard. Yeah, Hive Guard. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, Hive Guard apparently used to be like the entire army, and now they're like still okay, but they're not broken. From what I've seen, now they. I think now they like lower movement or something, right? Or did they used to lower movement? I don't even remember. 
Dude, oh my god, half the shit's sold out. <laughs> I have Crown, Moloch, Thornback, Brood, Mel Sipper, Dippadoo. Where's Hive Guard? Ba 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 Ferrant. Ba 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 ba. Or not Hive Guard. Where's uh. <laughs> I have tyrants. Pretty bad now? Really? They're bad now? I thought they were okay. I have tyrants. Tyranid, Termagants. Swarm Lord. Tyrant Guard. Hive Tyrant. Oh, that's a Hive Tyrant. Okay, I think I got one of those. I haven't built them yet. I see. Okay. Oh, they're like artillery. Okay, that makes sense. Neat terrifying part of the Tyranids is we might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid hive fleets, behemoth, Kronos, all these different kinds of hive fleets, and they've all arrived in the galaxy from different points. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying because as far as we know, we could just be surrounded these are sides. the good factions. <laughs> the only reason you may not hear a whole lot about Tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters. All these giant bugs swarming in, killing and eating everybody and evolving. Well, I mean, as cool as there are, there's some cool characters, the Swarm Lord, Old One-Eye. You can't really have a whole bunch of major character-based stories around them. As awesome as they are, they're simple. They want to eat you. They want to eat you and absorb your yeah. biomass. They are simple bugs. If you want something a little more complex, yeah. talk gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want, I get around faster than walking, <laughs> and wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. Gene stealer cults. Now nah, we're going orcs. Orcs, 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 orcs. Love orcs. So, yes, the, the green monsters, the green tide, the green skins. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big yeah, boys, yeah, they yeah. have axes, and they have got big old teeth and they want to kill everything, and there are so many of them. Yeah, the yeah, only yeah. reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. Orcs are so cool. Orcs they're like Skaven. Don't have <laughs> Philosophy. Isn't that like orcs don't have existential pause. Isn't that like the thing with Skaven? Like Skaven are actually the one of the smartest, like factions in Warhammer but like they just keep killing each other so they can't work together because like they make warp stone shit and they're just like yes yes and then they just blow each other up and blow themselves up that's what I thought <laughs> crisis what matters is who's the biggest orc you listen to that guy because he the biggest orc he big orc big orc knows best you win through the power of imagination of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage oh, they aren't that smart. That Some of them are, I see. Work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy <laughs> that defies all logic? As an orc, you're, you're enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can't. The biggest orc is the man who understands everything. He is the <laughs> boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, which is just hilarious to me. Those are orcs. <laughs> you fight. You like to... Which, by the way, when I was in England years ago, I, I, I'm telling you right now, people are like, oh, that's not how we sound, mate. But I swear to God, we were walking down the street, and there are some construction workers working on a building. And I walked by them and they were straight up like, Put the bloody fucking on this stupid old idiot. And he's like, Oh, fucking Lord, this stupid idiot. Oh, stupid idiot. Oh, back it up. Oh, I did it. And I was like, Holy shit, it's real. <laughs> These are real people, not actors. And I think, I think the, the, the people like Sam that are like, Oh, we don't sound like that, mate. There's some, there's always some people that sound like that. The same way in Chicago, there's people that actually sound like, Hey, it's a me, a meatball guy over here. You know, like, they exist. They're real. <laughs> if 
fight. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage war. You got your boss over there, and you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is orc dead can't fight because the orc dead. Orcs, <laughs> they <laughs> scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense. And because they believe, they have the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. If that machine's out of gas, you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel, and you run out of gas, <laughs> some orc behind you like, oh, oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier, and all the other orcs are like, oh, yeah, I, you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on, and it works again. Does it have gas? Probably not, but it works. The power of imagination. Yeah, that's my and favorite part of the lore for orcs. It makes them think that goes faster. Is they, they just think it and it becomes a it's thing. Because the sneakiest color. You want to know why? You ever seen a purple orc? Didn't fucking think so. Orcs are also like ancient as hell. They're back in the Eldari time frame. But that, back then they were called crooks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. Now they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard, and it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs. There are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. Maybe more. Who knows? But they keep on, you know, murdering each other, so it's not too bad of an issue. Orcs are entirely comic relief. Their stuff is slapped together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because <laughs> they imagine that it works. Orcs care only about who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest... By the way, one of my favorite Warhammer models that I've built is just a tiny-ass little grot oiler. And he's literally got, like, a squig, and he's, like, oiling something up from the squig. And he's just like, Bleh. I don't remember what it's from. It might have been from the, uh, the squig riders. It might have been from the squig riders, or it was from something else but it's like i love it and he's literally just like a tiny ass old grot guy <laughs> orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc and yeah the oil squig. they go and they issue a wa a wa is just war in orc they murder everybody <laughs> and everything in this giant tide of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something they don't care oh yeah i build bomb Eldar squigs too or the imperium or tau or anyone in between they're just so they get to beat shit up that's orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip, and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy. Or That's true. I play guy. orcs. Orc I love players it. players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's That's the true. Gar Straight up, when I play orcs, I run my stompa, and I don't give a shit. People are like, the, the orc stompa's not very good, and I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't give a shit. You put that thing down, <laughs> and then if people shoot it and it explodes, it, like, kills half your army, and I'm like, that's pretty fun. <laughs> or, you don't kill it, and it just goes like, and it just kills shit. That's fun. It's great. <laughs> guardsmen, Imperial Guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher, because they're well-trained. Yeah. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos, because they're just super... By well the way, actual trash garbage. This is the amount of times i played against, like, uh, the ass clown humans. They're like, oh, I'm hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. Like, get out of here. Get out of here. Stupid. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. But if they roll a six... They get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. They're so wack. Yeah, I've, I've done that, actually. It's a bad time. Wacky and silly. But the thing is, is if you roll well, you roll high, and you keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. <laughs> and if you don't, you lose. I mean, that's what you get when you play orcs. That's what happens when you play orcs. It's a coin flip, which is why you can't <laughs> be a salty bitch when you play orcs, because things won't go your way. 
it's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you'll, you're going to play some damn orcs. Oh, yeah. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, let's talk about the Necron. Oh, yeah, Necron time. Woo! The Necron. By the way, one of the Necron games I played, oh, my God, let me tell you. It was, like, one of the best things I ever had. So I had Illuminor Zerus. That's his name, right? So he's the one that can give you, like, plus one strength, plus one toughness, or some shitty thing. Ballistic skill? I don't know. So I gave plus one toughness to a unit of Necron Warriors. <laughs> and so the Necron Warriors were already hard to kill. And then whenever somebody would kill them, they just kept coming back. I, like, kept rolling fives or whatever it is I needed. I think it was fives. And it was just, like, the people I was playing against were just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I, it was, like, insane. I was just like, yeah, they come back. All right, they come back. Like, one unit of, like, ten warriors. Like, I think they lost, like, 15 warriors. But by the end of it, they still had, like, eight in the unit. Everyone was like, Jesus Christ. Like, this is... <laughs> they just kept coming back. Are it's fantastic. Skeletons and very grimdark again. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators, and they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Cork, Orc, Necron, Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty people. Not because they were personally shitty, but because their lives were awful. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible planet they lived on, and everything just. Necrons really are easy to paint. Necron tier was just really. You just like depressing. slap some paint on, they and then you dry really brush. They were looking for <laughs> immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible nature. They're boring, they but they're easy. Upon them, <laughs> and therefore, they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy. And they found this group. They're called the Old Ones. Imagine them kind of like the Forerunners in Halo or the Zelnaga. Slaying, the slaying, right? slaying. These Old Ones were these sp strong, oh, pretty much omnipotent beings. Slaying, slaying, and they, slaying. they, of course, knew the key to immortality. So the Necrons went to them and said, please, show us your ways. And the Old Ones said, piss off. Not really. They were a lot more humble about it. <laughs> they did not want to share their secret of immortality with the Necrons. The Necrons, of course, took this very well and waged war with them, kind of <laughs> under this united banner. The Necron different dynasties didn't really like each other, but under this one man, the Silent King, he thought the best Yo, way the to Silent King. was to do this. Oh my god, war. fun Silent King story. So, <laughs> I was playing a game, I had the Silent King, and he was down to like two health. Like, he had two wounds left, dude was about to explode, and kill everything so i was like all right i gotta get this guy out of here so i literally got the silent king to like charge into oh my god whatever whatever those annoying ass death guard units are that are kind of like blight kings like the blight king version of you know death guard whatever it is i have to charge into there and just blow up and then like kill like the rest of those and it was fantastic and i was like thank god because if he didn't make that charge he would have killed my own shit still lost the game but it was fun uh death shroud or blight lords hold on <laughs> i only uh, my 80 to 90 percent of my knowledge is just age of sigmar and warhammer fantasy uh, hold on death guard death guard death guard uh oh spaghettios uh maybe they were blight lord terminators they might have been blight lord terminators uh that sounds right either that or plague marines maybe they were plague marines it was either terminators or plague marines i don't know which one uh, and then I got shit on by Mortarian, the Demon Prince, because he's just like, hey, I don't die, and I do damage. And you're like, oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> War with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. This was known as the War in Heaven, and this is actually like a multi-stage war. 
because during this war in heaven, they discovered the star gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan. Oh yeah, the Catan! These star gods were also very much like old ones, almost omnipotent beings, and they too had the key to immortality. And so the Necrons went to them and said, I only have one Catan. I have the dragon Catan guy. He's ones. pretty neat. Can you help us kill these old ones? You, the Catan. And the Catan said, yes. And in fact, we can help provide you with the immortality you so desperately seek. So the silent king of the Necrons decided to make a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them. But this, of course, had been a Yeah, Void Dragon, trap. that's the one. And the Necrons were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing. He's but not an actual dragon, he's a Void Dragon. As their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the souls of the <laughs> Necrons. As this was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves just to serve their will. Although I've heard then, the Knight with their Scythe, whatever, Necron I don't know what it is, Knight something, Catan dude is like busted right now. Like he just does mortal wounds to everybody or something. Of the stars and their genocide complete and full genocide of these old ones the old ones did their best to stave it off they even created other races the eldari and the orcs to try to fight off the horrifying necron army and the katan above them but there was absolutely no possible chance for them and the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy their entire race completely removed full-on, 100% genocide. However, during Mama all me. this, the Catan, so just infatuated with their victory, started fighting each other for fun, for sport, and for small differences, doesn't matter. The Catan, with these over overpowered people, they're gonna eventually hit each other at some point. And as they began just menially fighting each other, the Eldari and the Orcs actually started pushing on the Catan's borders a little bit, giving them a little bit of a run for their money. And as this continued, this is when the Silent King, who retained his consciousness, decided to leap into action and oh. start a full-scale revolt against their Catan masters. And this revolt was bloody, as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they took these Katam and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap them in giant stasis vaults to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. And with the Necrons oh, that's having what the that entirety thing is. of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Quarks. And so what they did is they retreated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus guy diddled with a green console, and now the Necrons are back, and they see all these primitive Classic races Adeptus on their lawns, Mechanicus. and they think, get the fuck off of it. So the Necrons are back, super advanced, and they are here to reclaim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is theirs. Now that tabletop, they're a lot like that. Tons of undead hey, I built that skeleton guy. robots. Spider that guy. When they die, they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating. Hard to kill. Tons it's of actually crazy pretty stuff. Good. You can use the Catan themselves as units to fight with. Pretty cool. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons are all pretty substantial events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty pretty dang cool as well. Here's a good quote yeah. from a one yeah, of the war game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. When I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. My lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. 
We will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons are also pretty smug. Trays in the infinite, especially. A little, little dickhead. But <laughs> speaking of dickheads, last race. Let's talk. The all right, that's all we got. Those are the three main races that I'll, uh, I needed to see. Um, really the only good races. Uh, the only... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only other thing I have some of is like Chaos Knights, but like that's just big Chaos Mechs. I don't know. They're pretty neat. I'm not a big Mech person, but like Chaos Mechs, I'm like, all right, that's pretty neat. Actual Mechs, I'm like, eh. But Chaos Mechs, I actually like the new Chaos Mechs where they have the like weird desert skull heads and stuff too. I think those are cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Those are those are, those are all the good factions lore. So that's pretty cool. Do you have Chaos Mechs because they gave you a new one? I mean, you know, they might have sent me the new Chaos box set. Probably. <laughs> I don't know when my NDA lifts. I don't know what I can say. Uh, <laughs> possibly. Um. But yeah, uh, I definitely would build that on a stream if I did get that when the NDA lifted. <laughs> it might already be lifted. I don't know. I have to check my email. If I had it. Um, <laughs> uh, much like uh, the Night Haunt Battle Tome. I actually think I can actually talk talk about the Night Haunt Battle Tome in like 10 hours. Even though the entire thing's already been leaked online. Yeah, it's probably almost. Uh, that's right, I have to, I can make a video on that today. Oh my god, that'll be great. Um, so yeah, let's see. Those were all the, all those things. Uh, I still gotta build, build my Tyranid army, but, uh, for the most part, it's pretty fun. Uh... I guess Krendor may have actually gotten a human faction. Well, you know, that's like as close as you're going to get. Chaos Knights. <laughs> Krendor playing Night Haunt. Yeah, Night Haunt's great. I actually have 2,000 points of Night Haunt now. I have, oh my god. Like I was saying yesterday during the painting stream. Now I have, <laughs> I have an entire Night Haunt army. I have an entire Seraphon army. Not, don't, not only do I have an entire Seraphon army, I have every Seraphon unit. And then some. I have like four Stegodons, or no, I have three Stegodons and an Engine of the Gods. I have four Bastilodons, two Solar Engines, two Melee. Uh, I have Salamanders, I have Lord Croak, I have Old Lord Croak. Like, that's that's just a problem in itself. I have Skaven, I got a lot of Skaven, so I'm excited for the new book. Uh, I started getting Sylvaneth, because I'm excited for them, and I always like the tree people. I have every Orc. So I have Cruel Boy, I have uh, the, 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 the Iron Jaws, and I have Bone Splitters, which, you know, Bone Splitters. Uh, I have uh, Nurgle, which obviously, because I was painting it yesterday on stream, but I love Nurgle. Nurgle's really fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah. what's the other thing I have? Beast of Chaos, which, you know... <laughs> Dude, I still, ugh, every time, I, I like to rant about Beast of Chaos, because I swear to God, like, <laughs> hold on. Can I, like, can I just show you something? Okay, we're going to go to the Games Workshop web website right now, okay? I'll accept your cookies. Okay, let me, let me do a little Beast of Chaos stuff right here, okay? Now, I'm going to show you some units, and you tell me if this looks like it would be... <laughs> In the beasts of chaos. All right, we're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little experiment here. All right, first up, we're gonna go the Lumineth. Okay. Okay, we're gonna scroll down. Okay, hold on, hold on. Where the shit is he? Okay, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Does this guy look like he is a beast of chaos? Does he? Does he look like a beast of chaos with his giant horns and cow head? Okay. No. Okay, you know, okay, maybe right. He looks like a beast, but he looks like a non-chaotic beast. All right, this was a test. 
This was a test of the emergency broadcast system. You passed it. Now, okay, now we're gonna go, we're gonna go chaos, okay? We're gonna go slaves to darkness, alright? Hold on. Hold on. Does this guy look like a beast of chaos? You better, you better not say it. You better not say no. Okay, yes, this guy looks like a beast of chaos. <laughs> Alright? But he's not. He's a slave to darkness. So you can ally him into Beasts of Chaos, but he's not actually in Beasts of Chaos. I was like, this guy should just have a Beasts of Chaos tag. Like, how does he not have the tag? I don't get it. He's got, he's a beast. He's chaos. He's a chaotic beast. Like, he should just have it by nature. He looks like a, like a cool bulgore, all right? So that's one. <laughs> Like, when they released that, I was upset. I was like, how is he not a beast of chaos? I was just, like, blown away. Um, I guess they don't have any of the new stuff they just showed, but, like, they showed more ogroid dudes that aren't beast of chaos. Uh, I think there's... Isn't there, like, Zinch? There's, like, a Zinch dude that looks like it. He's another ogroid guy. Uh, because I remember when I saw him, I was like, oh, that must be a beast of chaos. Oh, yeah, ogroid thaumaturge. This guy. Like, he's not a beast of chaos either, but I guess he's just Zinch, but still, he could, I guess he looks a more demon than beast. But he's still, he's got hooves, he's got horns, like, that's a beast of chaos, he should be able to be a beast of chaos. Like, straight up. Uh, now let me show you the actual beast of chaos, alright? Let me... Beast of chaos. Alright. So you got your, yeah, you your endless spell, you got your herd stone, which, actually a great model. You got your start collecting, whatever. You got your gores. You got your bull gores. You got your scent of gores. You got your dragon ogor shagot. Dude, this model <laughs> is actually so bad. <laughs> First up, it's fine cast, okay? Second up, it's so old. It's so old, and I'm really hoping that he gets a new model. It's... It's not good. The Jabber Slife. Okay, this model, also old as shit and extremely hard to put together. I haven't even built it yet, because he sucks. Like, he sucks and he's hard to build. So I'm like, why do I even want to build this? So I didn't. Uh, these Centicore, dude, these are straight up, like, from Warhammer Fantasy. Like, look, they don't even bother putting the circular bases on it. They're like, yeah, these are from Fantasy. If you want them, buy them, idiot. Um... Uh, you got your Gorgon, you got your Cygor, you got your Doom Bull. Actually, pretty cool. The Cygor... Okay. The Cygor is, like, such a cool model. And it sucks ass. Like, this model, they've dropped its points so many times. And it's just still ass. It's so bad. He throws one boulder, okay? And then it's like, it's like four by three or some shit, four by two. I don't know. It's like four by two, rend one, d6 damage. So even if you hit with it, it might do one damage. I was like, if you're getting hit by a giant rock boulder, that's like this weird magical rock, it should have like a magical effect, number one. And then it should like at least have, like, three rend or something. So, like, if you're getting hit by it, you're getting hit. You're telling me a giant-ass boulder rock has one rend? Get out of here. Uh, or yeah, some AoE. Just something. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, I think it should be hard to hit with, but then, like, easy to wound. But, like, it's got a... <clears throat> then... <laughs> you got your Zangors, which, like... It's funny, because, like, some of the best Beast of Chaos units are just Zangors. You got your best of gores, which are not the worst of gores. Hoo -hoo. Uh, you got your chaos spawns. You got your more zangors. You got your cockatrice, another model. It's hard, really weird to build. <gasps> Tuscor chariot, another old ass model. Uh, you got your ungor raiders. Dragon ogors are actually okay. This dude's actually pretty cool. I like his model a lot. More ungors, chaos warhounds. Like half this army is just fine cast, man. It's sad. <laughs> The worst part now is just they're good, but it's good because you just take bulgors. Like, look at these guys. Look at these bulgors. 
So pretty much the the way you run Beast of Chaos now is because they got buffed with Ren. So you just take Bulgors and you run like 20 Bulgors and you just send them at everything. And they just, they either kill it or die. And that's pretty much how you play Beast of Chaos now. These models are also old as shit. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that's, that's the main thing with Beast of Chaos. That's my Beast of Chaos rant. Thank you for listening. And, uh, hopefully you had a good time. Hold on, yeah, we can look at Skaven. Hold on. I actually have a lot of Skaven models, okay? So let's take, take a look here. This, the Bombardier came out not that long ago. He's actually pretty cool. I like him. He's got little rats running out of thing. Thankful and Bone Ripper, that's another cool model. I actually, I built this guy. I have him. I haven't painted him yet, but he's really cool. Here's Thankful on top of Bone Ripper. I like that model a lot. Uh, Doom Wheel. Doom Wheel actually holds up well. It's just got this flag on it. This flag broke off of mine, and I didn't bother putting it back on. But the Doom Wheel, the Doom Wheel itself is actually pretty cool. You got, like, the rat in the back, and then the rat driving it, and the little warp stone things and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you got the Plague Furnace. That's pretty neat. Uh, Hell Pit Abomination. Actually holds up decently. Actually, it was pretty cool. I have one. I haven't built it yet. So I'm probably going to build that pretty soon. Probably once the book comes out. Uh, Plague Priest is pretty cool. Although all I did was I got the start collecting. And then I built the mage one. Or the seer. The gray seer. And then I took the Plague Priest right here. You can see him. And I just built him by himself. And then I glued him onto his own base. So I made my own priest that isn't fine cast. Uh, then you got Vermin Lords. There's plenty of those. You have Master Molder that's from like 2001. Uh, you got a Warp Grinder, which is... Dude, Warp Grinder and Rattling Guns and uh, Warp Fire Throwers are all metal. So if you like metal, <laughs> these are your guys right here. That and the Arch Warlock is also metal. Uh, I would know because I've bought all of them and they're, uh, they're metal. Um... Yeah, your gutter runners, which people were really hoping were going to get upgraded uh, recently, and they did not. <laughs> Although they're only $18. That's pretty cheap. Uh, Scryer, Scryer Acolytes. You got your Claw Lord. Uh, you got your Rat Swarms, which you can really just make yourself with just gluing the other rats on the things. Uh, you got Gray Seer. Yeah, Claw Lord. I think this is the upgraded Claw Lord model. That one's plastic. The other one's fine cast. Uh, we got your Warlock Engineers, which you don't really need because the guy up at the top, the uh, Bombardier, is pretty much an engineer, but doesn't. He is an ass. <laughs> he doesn't look like ass. Uh, you got your Plague Sensor Bears, your Night Runners, your Doom Flare. Uh, I think I have a Doom Flare I haven't built. It's also fine cast. But I just I just hate building fine cast. So like if the book comes out and this thing is amazing, I'll build it. But outside of that, like I need a reason to build it. <laughs> uh, you got some rat ogres, giant rats, and pack masters. These models are so old. Like my god. Uh, yeah, your plague monks. Yeah, your clan rats. Yeah, your Gisales. I actually got a couple of these. They're pretty good. You got your Storm Fiends. These models are plastic, but my god, are they... They are hard. They are annoying to build. They're not hard to build. They're annoying to build. It's like, okay, let's glue this piece on, then this piece on, then this piece on, then this piece. And they're like these little pieces. It's like you're just building a ship in a bottle or something when you build a Storm Fiend. Uh, and then you got all the Vermin Lords. <laughs> uh, the Endless Spells are actually pretty cool. You got Storm Vermin. I built three, I built these gnaw holes. Gnaw holes are really cool. I'm probably going to paint those pretty soon. Uh, and then you got your warp lightning cannon and your plague claw, which come in the same kit. But I actually really like both of these. I have one warp lightning cannon and I have one plague claw and I'm waiting for the new book to decide what I'm going to build uh, out of my third box that I have. So my, okay, my big wish right now is I'm hoping the plague claw has the same rule as Nurgle, the current Nurgle, and uh the the clan pestilent as well where if you're near people you give them disease points and i'm hoping this gives like aoe disease and if it does i'm gonna build it and run too because i would love it 
Uh, uh, if you, I mean, I actually painted it on a video. If you go to my Warhammer channel, bloop, and you search for uh, Skaven there, I actually painted a Plague Claw in a video, so you can just see it there. Um, so that's all Skaven. And then, here, I'll show off, uh... Why would they need to be near people, aren't there? Well, I mean, I don't mean them specifically. I mean, like, Clan Pestilence, so, like, Plague Monks and stuff would give people disease when they're near them. Or the Plague Priest, and then the, the artillery would fling stuff, and it would hit units, and it would disease the unit and things around it. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, and I'm hoping that's what they do. Skaven should get more allies as well, yeah. Well, I don't know. Do they have allies in the actual lore? I guess it kind of depends. Uh, where is... What am I looking for? Seraphon. There we go. So Seraphon are neat. You got your Lord Croak. Uh, like, I literally have all this. <laughs> you got your Skinks, your Source Guard, your Star Priest. Old Blood. But, like, so many of these models are, like... Old. <laughs> like, my god. Like, oh my god. Okay. The funniest thing to me... Like, look at this model. Look at how ugly this model is. <laughs> like, this Salaman, it just looks drunk. And the funniest part is this is one of the strongest units in the game. Like, straight up, this model... If you run, like, three of them, they are broken. They're so broken that Games Workshop had to do a rule to make it so if you kill these things, you get bonus points because of how strong they were and how much people were using them. Yeah, the nerf didn't do anything. The They literally <laughs> added in like a hunter rule, so if you kill them, you get bonus points because of how strong they are. Um, Squigoth? I actually have a bunch of uh, goblin dudes I need to build and squigs and everything, but I haven't built them yet. I'm waiting for the new, uh, the new Gits book. So I'm really excited for the new Gits book when that comes out, probably in the fall. I don't know if it's actually going to be, but it's like they're releasing two destruction poems. And the Gits need a new book. It's going to be a Gits book. Like, everyone already figured it out. Uh, Source Warriors, Knights, Starseer, Croxigors. Like, okay, here's what I was talking about. These Croxigors are old as shit. Like, look at this. Can we please get some new Croxigors? Please. <laughs> please. Uh, Bastolodons. And, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else do I have? Uh, yo, Sylvaneth are getting their new book. By the way, look at how cool the Sylvaneth are for people that don't even know. Like, you got a Warsong Revenant. Like, look how cool that model is. You got the eggs or, like, hatching and stuff. And the vines and everything. Uh, you got a Lariel. I don't have a Lariel, but I really want to get a Lariel just to paint the big-ass beetle. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, you got Dryads. You got Kurnoth Hunters. You got Drycha. Tree Lord Ancient? I hope to make the Tree Lord Ancient cool, because he's, like, legit, like, an awesome model. Like, look at that. I love that. He's got a little owl on him. Got a little owl. Um, and then they're adding in, uh, they're adding in a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and by other stuff, I mean, like, they're adding in some archer elves. They're adding in, uh, like, dragonfly mounts. Like, it's actually be really cool. I'm excited to play the Sylvaneth and paint them. Uh, and then... Oh my god, do you want to see a meme? Alright, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Let me open up the Fire Slayers. So who here likes dwarves? Who here likes dwarves? <laughs> Are you ready to see some amazing... Diversity in the dwarf models. <laughs> wow, look at the diverse dwarves. Look at look at the diversity of the dwarves. There they are. <laughs> wow, you can really tell them apart. <laughs> it's <laughs> that's like the it's not even like like, if you're playing against Fire Slayers, you're just like, okay, uh, I'm gonna attack your unit of...
uh, are those berserkers or are those uh, hearth guard? It's like, oh, they're uh, they're hearth guard. Okay, are those now? Wait, are those Volkite berserkers or hearth guard? Oh, those are hearth guard. Okay, and that's is that a doom seeker or is that a battle smith and is that a berserk? Like, it's it's insane. They just all look the same. Like, the only way I could see you diversifying them a bit is, like, you'd have to paint their hair colors different, I guess. Because you'd be like, okay, my hearth guard have, like, red beards, and then my berserkers are orange, and my, you know, uh, maybe another one's, like, yellow or something. You would have to, like, paint them differently, because otherwise you just, you can't tell. Like, straight up. You cannot tell. <laughs> uh... Wait, where are the magma dross? They don't even have magma dross here. Are they sold out? Where's the magma dross? They actually look really cool. I guess everybody bought them all. <laughs> like, where are they? They're not even here. I don't know. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, Night Haunt are really cool. Let me go Night Haunt. Yeah, Lady O. I just built Lady Olinder. Uh, Blade Geists. You got Cruel Geist. Oh, maybe they're being reboxed. That's true. I uh, got the black coach, dude. This model's awesome. I I just finished building this model. Look how cool that is. With like the uh, the ghost and stuff. Hold on, you can like free three sixty it here. I love that model. Um, yeah, Kurdos. He's a piece pretty neat. Uh, I got Tomb Banshee. She's pretty old, but she's actually pretty cool. Whole bunch of stuff sold out. I'm actually building Hex Race right now. But yeah, Night Haunt are really cool. I love Night Dude, this guy? Oh my god, I love this guy. Look how cool this model looks. Reichnor the Grim Hailer. Like, oh my god. Like, straight up. This guy's awesome. Wow, we. Uh, Weak Thor with the 74 months. Thank you, Weak Thor. What the passive? I'm not allowed to passive, dude. Not to it. What the passive? That's what the passive. 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 Swing. Thank you for 74 months. Um, let's see. What else is there? Uh, there's a. The other army. I'm trying to just do all the armies I play. I play, uh, I have Ossiarch Bone Reapers. OBR is pretty cool. They're just kind of shitty right now. Well, they're not shitty. They're just, like, mediocre. Maybe slightly below average. Hold on. Ossiarch Bone Reapers. They're pretty cool. You got Catacros. You got, uh, the Vokmortician. You got Leech Cavalos. This is probably my favorite model I got. The Gothazar Harvester. Like, look at this dude. He's just, like, a skeleton, uh, a skeleton alligator thing. And he just collects souls. I love this model. And yeah, he's got... <laughs> he's got crotch man. You can see right there. The little crotch man. <laughs> um, you got the Mortec crawler. So they got like this big ass thing that shoots... Souls or I don't know what else it shoots. Um, you got the Death Riders, you got the Stalkers, you got your Soul Masons. I've been painting my bone- well, I stopped painting my- painting my Bone Tide Nexus. I'll probably paint it during, like, Halloween or- Halloween or something. You got Archon the Black. Uh, these are, like, kind of like the older stuff, but... Yeah, I love the Harvester. He's, like, one of my favorite models. Uh, Catacross is also pretty crazy, like... The detail and everything that goes into this model. Like, wow, we... Is there a way to get these, like, pre-painted? Yeah, there's, like, services and stuff you can pay people, and they'll just paint them for you and send them to you. There's actually a bunch of people who do that. Uh, let's see. Who else do I have? I have, uh... Oh, orcs. Hold on. Destruction. The old orc war clans. Uh, a lot of the new cruel boys are crazy. Like, look at this dude. This is Gobsprack, the mouth of Mork. I love this model. It's like a giant vulture. And he's gobsprack's just chilling up here, like, eh. This one came out, uh, last summer. With the Cruel Boys. He's actually kind of ass. They didn't give him a plus casting thing. So that kind of sucks, but... 
I'm hoping they drop his points in the new updates. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's it's like an awesome model still. Like, fantastic. Um, then we got Swamp Boss, Scumdrek. He's pretty neat. Really like that model. Uh, we got the, the Mosh Crawler Slogoth. <laughs> that one's pretty fun. This little dude's like banging the drum up top. Or they got their nets. A lot of detail, though. Uh, break a boss. I like this guy. He's probably one of my favorite models from that uh, that faction. The break a boss. Uh, you got your kill bow. Can't go wrong with a kill bow. Can't go wrong with a kill bow. Uh, and then you got. Wait, where's the? Uh... Oh, here they are. The bolt boys. I love the fact that, like, they got just straight-up crossbow dudes. Like, this is the army for me. You got your crossbow guys. <laughs> uh, then you go down a bit. You got your Kragnos. You got your Kragnos there. I gotta paint my Kragnos. Uh, Mega Boss on Maw Crusher. That's the one I always show off on my painting streams. He was actually really fun to paint. I loved painting him. Uh, you got your old-ass Savage Oryx. You got your Brutes. You got your Wargog Prophet. War Dock. Uh, old ass models. War Channer's neat. Weird Knob Shaman. Uh, I've built so many Boar Boys, I just do not want to see another Boar Boy. <laughs> uh, I guess Ard Boys are sold out. Celestial Lions with the host raid. Thank you, Celestial Lions. Uh, dude, I can't wait to play the Gits. Like, look at some of these Gits models. Oh wait, that's War Clans. Hold on, stop. Rewind. Not death. Destruction. Gits. Uh, I I love the Gits models. Like, look at these. You got your 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 Gaba Palooza. <laughs> Dude, I love. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the Gaba Palooza 100%. Like, look at how amazing these are. Yeah, like your crazy one. He's like. Thanks. I don't know what he's doing to that little goblin guy. You got your... That one's wearing a mask on top of a squig thing. Or actually, I think he's got a squig skull. That's what it is. He's like boiling up some potions. He's like on a shroom. And this dude's just walking around carrying potions. I love these models. Uh, you got your loon boss on cave squig. <laughs> yeah, your mangler squigs. Solid. Love those mangler squigs. Uh, you got Squig Herds, you got Squig Hoppers. You got your Loon Boss. Where's the... Uh, the Spider. Eh, yeah, there's the Spider. The old Arach Arachnarok Spider. Like, look at that thing. I have one of those I haven't built yet, so I'm excited when the they get... Whenever they get their new book, I'm gonna build it. That'll be really fun. You got your... <laughs> he's like tied up in there. Uh, they got their spears. <laughs> yeah, the dwarves have none of that unique fun vibe. I think that's what I dislike so much about fire slayers and dwarf stuff. Like, they didn't give them any fun like a lot of these other factions have. Um, and they got the Trogos. Like, the Trogos are really cool, too. Like, you got these. Uh, you got the giant one, the Dankhold Trogoth. People always paint this for, like, um competitions and stuff. It is a really cool model. You got your dank old trog boss. Big fan of those. Uh, I stand trogoths. Uh, oh my god, these are the fellwater trogoths. This one's just throwing up. Like, straight up, he's just vomiting. I don't know what this one's doing, but... Uh, the Spontane, 27 months. Thank you, the Spontane. What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Sweet. Thank you for the 27 months. Oh, the model Jesse painted was, uh, Slambo, which I believe was. Uh, was it a Slaves to Darkness? I think it was a Slaves to Darkness model. Slambo. Unless he got discontinued. 
before his model got upgraded. But I'm pretty sure he was Slaves to Darkness. Sorcerer Lord, uh, Varengara. Dude, here's, dude, look at Archeon. Archeon's, I think, one of the biggest models uh, in Warhammer, actually. Wow, we. He's got so much detail. He got like the three heads. Archeon's just chilling on top. Mamma mia. Slambo is sadly discontinued, but he is a spiritual successor in Kagra's Ravager's Warband. Oh, it's a Warband? Alright, hold on. <clears throat> By the way, look at Bellacor. Bellacor just got a new model like last year or something. Bellacor, Bellacor is crazy. Like, wowie. Uh, it's no good close ups, but still. Uh, is it Kagra? Kag. Kagra's Ravagers. Okay, here they are. Oh, yeah, there he is. I see. Is this him? Hold on. Yeah, okay, so this is new Slambo. He doesn't have the same goofiness, but, you know, he's like a upgraded version. No more goofiness, though. Sad times. Hold on. Uh, who else is pretty neat? I mean, Lumineth are cool. They came out, like, a couple years ago. They have a lot of cool models. Like this dude on this tornado thing shooting his bow and arrow. Uh, they have... They got, like, one of those Nagrand waterfall things. Stone Mage actually looks pretty neat. It's just chilling up here. <laughs> uh, Lumineth are miserable to paint. Uh, where is oh yeah Teclas got Archmage Teclas chilling on his thing dude literally has like a cheesecake factory menu of spells you can choose from I swear to god like I played against Lumineth it's just like alright I'm gonna cast this thing and then they just open the book like oh uh, I have a spell that counters that and you're like oh okay and then they're like oh uh, I have a spell do I have a teleport oh yeah there's my teleport spell I'm gonna do that and you're like oh okay they're like, uh, do I have a spell that makes it harder for you to do things? Uh, yeah, there it is. That's just like constantly. <laughs> just constantly. Like, ugh. Uh, this dude's pretty neat. The Spirit of the Mountain. This giant ass sledgehammer thing. Uh, and then, oh, what are the. <laughs> the Sentinels are pretty much like your core unit because they're broken. I don't know if they're still broken, but they were broken. Uh, so they're pretty fun. Then, uh, who else was there? There's more destruction. I mean, there's Sons of... If you want, like, a three-model army, you just play Sons of Behemoth. They just got the Gargans. So you got your Kraken Eater. You got your War Stomper. And you got your Gatebreaker. And then you just throw in a couple of Man Crusher Gargans and you're good to go. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, then you have... What are some other... Soul Blight? A lot of people play Soul Blight. This is like the vampire type of faction. I'm not a big vampire Soul Blight person, but they... I mean, you know. I still think they're pretty cool. Like, they have some cool models. There's Radicar the Wolf. You got Radicar the Beast. Uh, Vampire Lord. And then you just have a bunch of, like, skeletons and zombies. They might just be a little too human for me, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Uh, let's see, other chaos. There's all the Nurgle, but I mean, I've, I've pretty much showed off all the Nurgle before. Literally yesterday, when I showed off all my Nurgle models, because I, I pretty much have, like, all of them. Uh, then you got... What's the other? Oh, there's corn. Corn's pretty neat, although their book is like four years old or something. Uh, pretty much bloodthirsters are the main thing you play if you're going corn. That's like it. It's like, oh, you're going corn. You play bloodthirsters. Everything else is like... Whatever. <laughs> uh... 
the Zinch is still pretty cool. I like Zinch. You got Kairos Fate Weaver. He's a pretty neat model. And he's pretty good. Like, oh my god, look at how crazy that is. I love that model. Uh, let's see, what else? What else, what else, what else? I don't know. I mean, you can, you can spend all day just looking at all these. Hold on, let me show you the fantastic <laughs> orc models that I love in 40k. You got your Mazrog Scragbad. I love this guy. He's my general always. His thing is like on a four up. When he dies, he can come back to life. So it's always pretty fun. So you have to choose between doing that or like trying to fight and kill somebody. So you can do like one or the other. I think that's a stratagem. Uh, Def Cop, those are good. I got quite a bit of those. Uh, the Kill Rig is great. I love my Kill Rig. And it's just got this big squig pulling the, the cart. With all these orcs on top. Um... And we have, oh, the pain boss. This is the dude that, like, pretty much hurts you if it fails. And you got the little goblin guy with him. <laughs> uh, what's on the next page here? You got your beast boss. I got one of him. Uh, the squig hog boys. I got a bunch of these. Those are, like, my main units I run. So I was like, dude, if I'm playing orcs, I'm going to use some, I'm going to play squigs. So I got a bunch of squigs. Uh, there's the stompa. <laughs> Still one of the most annoying models to build because the instructions are actual. They're like as garbage as the model is like this model is built out of garbage and the instructions are <laughs> resemblant of that. Uh, yeah, your Gorkonauts, your Morkonauts, your Orc Gretchens. These are actually, uh, wait, where'd they go? The Orc Gretchens, these are actually really good for just keeping them on the points and stuff. Is it frowned upon to play with unpainted, not finished models? As long as they're built, it's not the worst. Like, people would obviously rather play against painted stuff, but so many people play with unpainted models that, like, nobody would care. It may be at a tournament or something, but if you're just playing casually, like, nobody really cares. I've played against, I, I think, like, over half the armies I played against weren't even painted. <laughs> Uh, you got your Storm Boys are alright. Yeah, you actually lose points in a tournament if you aren't painted. Uh, you got... Da, da, da. A lot of these are older. Beast Boss on Squigasaur is pretty neat. Squig Buggy is actually pretty neat, too. I like that. They, like, throw squigs out. This guy's got a wonky face. <laughs> uh... Death Dread's actually pretty neat, but I think it's kind of bad. The Daka Jet's really good. I don't have one, but I've played against one. They're, like, pretty crazy, the Daka Jets. Uh, Gaz, uh, Gaz Cool Thraka's really good, too. It takes forever to kill him, because he can only take, like, three wounds per phase or something like that, so it's really hard to kill him. Plus, he's, like, just crazy. Uh, so that's a cool model. And what's on the last page? It's not loading. Uh, last page. There we go. Gun wagon, hunter rig, and mad doc Grotznik. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Those are, those are pretty much like all the armies and stuff that I play. I think it's pretty fun. I'm, I've been, it's going to be, uh, three years and like a month that I've been painting and building and playing Warhammer, which is pretty insane to think about, but I still love it. It's like, uh, probably my favorite hobby I've been doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a good time. <laughs> so, uh, hold on, where am I? Uh, oh shit. Oh shit. I'm probably gonna be done now though. I've been streaming a couple hours. My food's ready. So I'm probably just gonna eat that. And uh, chill out. So. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the stream. It was a good time. 
Uh, if I inspired you to play Warhammer, check out my Warhammer channel, Warhammer Krendor. Click the link in the chat. I talk about Warhammer over there. It's pretty fun. I've had it for a few years now. I have videos on, like, how to pick an army, how to build, how to paint, how to do all that. So you can check that out if you're curious. Uh, thanks, everybody, for subscribing, resubscribing, dropping bits, dropping tips, gifting subs. Thank you very much for all the support. Uh, if you're new here, click the follow button, follow along, be alerted when I go live. And, yeah. I think that's, uh, that's all I got. Unless. <laughs> no, I actually got a, it's not just painting on the Warhammer channel. I do, like, discussions on other stuff as well. Uh, and I build, I, I do a whole bunch of stuff over there. Uh, oh my god, all right, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. We have... A Twitch... A Twitch bounty. For, uh, the... Fan controlled football. Welcome to Fan Control Football 101. Everything you need to know about the FCF. Here are the basics. Fan controlled oh, football. All the way to the house. Touchdown. You pick the team, you draft the players, you call the plays in real time. What? From an app on your phone, tablet, or computer. Great fan call running that rock. Wait, so it's just, it's like Twitch, it's like Twitch plays Pokemon, but Twitch plays football? <laughs> is that what it is? Is this? Wait, so it really is just Twitch plays football. So fans, are you ready for season version 2.0? This year, it's the ultimate rival. Although they're yeah, they're playing on the arena football teams, field where it's like half a field. Collective. Four brand new teams controlled exclusively by NFT avatars. Available oh. slash ballers This is where live action and real players meet web 3.0. Great. So let the trash talk begin. It's awesome. The versus the ballers. Which celebrity ownership group will that's, you squad That's that's great. The Glacier Boys or Kingpins? How about should have been Stars or the Knights? Yep. The Beast or Bored Apes? Or will you help the Zappers or Team Aoki win it all? It's up to you. The future of sports is well, being controlled. Great. <laughs> Control the game. Call the play. Be part of Sports Revolution with Fan Control Football. Fan Control Football. Go to FCF.io, pick your team, and level up. Now. Now. Power to the fans. Power to the fans. All right, great. That's uh, that's the that's the fan controlled football right there. Can I buy an NFC for you? Can buy an NFC for this? Yeah, you can buy the NFC and the AFC. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow night. That's right. Me and Jesse are gonna be doing a stream. Together, I'll probably end up hosting him for it. And uh, we're going to be watching Nick Cage. What's this movie called again? We're going to be watching Knowing. Which is a movie where a professor, Nicolas Cage, deciphers a mysterious code foretelling future calamities. Can he somehow avert them? It's a 2009 movie. And the top review was a one star review that said there is literally no meaning to this movie. And then Jesse just said, Lamau, amazing. And I was like, yeah, we're watching this. So tomorrow night, we'll be watching that <laughs> on stream. And then we'll probably watch another movie right after because that's what we did last time. So we'll probably watch that and then something else. So should be good. And then Sunday night is Blood Bowl. So we got we got back-to-back -back, uh, super stream fiestas there. Uh... It's on Amazon Prime Video, so we're watching it on... So as long as you have that tied to your Twitch or whatever, you can watch along with us. Or you can just watch along however uh, you want. It shows, like, the movie timing where we are and stuff like that. Either way, I'll be back tomorrow.
So yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah.